We are going to the Drake Hotel, we are going to the Palmer House Hilton, and we are going to Hilton Chicago. There are, I'm sure there are other videos out here on YouTube of the Hiltons of Chicago, but no one else can give you the perspective that I can because I have worked at two of the three hotels that we are going to. I worked at the Palmer House and I worked at the Drake. And I know some stories that uh, I'll be able to share with you along the way. And one of those three hotels was the 2023 winner of Historic Hotels of America. So we're gonna be diving into all these hotels. So if you're looking to stay in Chicago or you're looking for a staycation and you're a Chicago local, let me know that down below. Hello everybody, welcome to Chicago, AKA the greatest city in the world, known for their pizza, the birthplace of the skyscraper, the very start of Route 66, from all the way from here in Chicago, all the way to Santa Monica in California. I am standing right behind me at Pritzker Pavilion. Why don't you say it's time to head over to the Drake? Let's go. Stop number one. It's a little unfortunate that I'm not able to see the bean today. You can kind of see in the background that chrome bean looking thing. That's called the bean, as our Chicagoans call it. It's really called cloud gate, but if you really want some street cred, you gotta call it the bean. They must be redoing the concrete because they have the whole area blocked off. But right now I'm walking on Michigan Avenue, heading all the way north uh, to the Drake Hotel. And Michigan Avenue, past just north of the river, has their nickname, it's called the Magnificent Mile, or Mag Mile for short. And uh, lots of high-end shopping, and dining, it's a big tourist area. This is not just a hotel tour, it's kind of a, here's a quick look at Chicago tour too, if you know what I mean. So I am a Chicagoan, born and raised here. So I do have some Chicago street cred, wearing my Chicago Bears hoodie, go Bears. But like I said, yeah, I'm born and raised in the area, but we currently live in Florida, hence the Mickey hat. My family and I live right by Walt Disney World, so our normal videos are those of Disney related. But we do, we do a couple hotels here or there and whatnot. For those of you that are new around here, my name is Mark. For those of you that are familiar with the channel, it's just myself. Carrie and the girls are not here today, so it's a solo excursion. All right, we are on Michigan Avenue, and this fits the channel to a T. Walt Disney World. Walt Disney World. Another fun thing, guys can Google this if you want, the Magnificent Mile Light Festival. When I was working at the Drake, um, I was involved with part of that, and there's a huge asso association on the Mag Mile they have like walkie-talkies with. And you pretty much have to turn all your lights on all, all at once. But Mickey and Minnie make an appearance at that parade. Go ahead and Google it. I was only able to work it once, but it was a great experience. So right behind me here, you have the, a Chicago water tower, one of the originals. And I bring this up because it was one of the only buildings to survive the Great Chicago Fire in the 1870s. So more on that a little later because it's tied to our second hotel, the Palmer House. Chicago original. Okay, so right behind me at this building right here, we have the Drake Hotel, our first stop of the day, right here in Michigan Avenue and Walton Place. So we're gonna do a, a quick overall tour, the ballroom spaces, any meeting rooms, and I'll share some fun facts with you along the way. The Drake Hotel opened up on New Year's Eve 1919, and throughout the Roaring Twenties, the Drake became a high society's first choice. The Drake Hotel has 535 guest rooms, two main ballroom spaces, and plenty of other historic charm along the way. Quick little fun fact for you guys, two I have actually right now, two. This is home to Chicago's second oldest bar, 
Coq d'Or. On December 6th in 1933, the day after Prohibition ended, Coq d'Or opened to the flavor for thirsty patrons. And believe this or not, it only cost 40 cents to purchase whiskey here back in the day. Flags are not out right now on the flagpoles, but there have been politicians that have stayed here when I was here from countries throughout Europe and around the world. So I've had to put out the English flag, the Ireland flag. Um, I put out one more and I can't forget it off the top of my head. It's very nice inside, put it that way. It's very nice, very uh, old charm. It's not like a modern flair. It's very kind of old, old school, old Victorian, not Victorian. It's a very old vintage, but done right. It's done right. Enough blabbling. Let me go inside and show you guys. Let's head up the stairs to the main lobby and then over to the left you have Palm Court. It is definitely weird being back here because this was the hotel that I worked at before we re relocated down to Florida. It's nice to be back. But now that I'm inside, it is very hot. I'm gonna take my jacket off and put it in my backpack. Here is a look at Palm Court. Very, very nice. Kind of see what I mean when I say it has that old kind of charm to it. It's nice. So they host tea here is very big at Palm Court. So that's why there's a lot of tables here. It's not a sit down restaurant. It's mostly for tea service. So for holiday tea and afternoon tea, this is the spot to be for sure. And then inside you have Club International, which I'm not going to go in because it's closed, but if Walls could talk in there, they would share some very, very interesting stories. It used to be a private like gentleman's club back in Tayday. Very expensive, you need to be very wealthy and know somebody to kind of get in there. You, for right now, it's usually just used for special events or as a meeting room that clients can kind of buy it out as a space. Wrapping back around, you have the lobby. We kind of came in, straight ahead is the check-in area at the front desk. And then we will continue back out the way we came in and try to head over to Gold Coast Room. This is where I was able to meet Governor Pritzker. Well, not meet him. I saw Governor Pritzker here. And right now we're just kind of in like the foyer or like a pre-function space at the moment. And I'll try to peek my head in. The door is open, so I'll try to peek my head in the Gold Coast Room. But they are setting up for something in here as well. They really don't make hotels like they used to anymore. They really don't. All right, so I was going to show you guys the grand ballroom and the French room that are down this way, but it looks like there is a meeting going on, so I don't want to interrupt at all. So instead, I'll just try to throw some pictures up for you guys so you can get a general feel and sense of what it's like here, because it's cool. So before we head downstairs to the arcade level or street level, there's some shops and everything down there. I'll show you guys what an elevator looks like. Very surprising. All right, so this is the arcade level and it smells amazing because this is where you get your, your morning coffee at Lavaza. You have another entrance here to Coke Dior, which was that second oldest bar here in Chicago. And then continuing down this way, you just have kind of a gift, gift shop. Heading on down this way now, and the back end of the Drake Hotel on the arcade level, you have Cafe on Oak which was formerly Cape Cod. And a little fun fact for you here is that uh, Marilyn Monroe and Joe DiMaggio, when they were dating, they came here, they ate here, they stayed here, and they written their initials in the, uh, uh, the bar top here. And let's, I don't know if I can get in, doesn't look like the breakfast spot is currently open at this time, but I'll try to show what you guys, but I'll try to give you a sense of what I'm talking about. Yeah, the, the door is locked and well, I know the ways to get in. I'm not going to be that person. I'm gonna respect things that are, are closed and people or meetings and whatnot. Yeah, I'm not gonna be that guy that uh, disrespects things being blocked or closed. So I'm gonna try to show you my best throughout all three properties here. But if there is something going on and I just can't show you, I'll look to put a picture in or something so you can get a sense of what I'm talking about. Actually, I got Marilyn Monroe right here. See, there's just subtle touches, subtle touches. So for right now, I'm going to head on to the backside and kind of show you guys 
what Chicagoans really see because their Drake sign that they have here, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, we're outside. I was not able to go up to the guest room floors without having a key card or a fob, unfortunately. I'm not trying to gain special access or anything like that. I do you remember what it looks like? The views are spectacular, but look what I see. The Drake sign. Got the lovely Drake sign installed in the 1940s and as a few years ago has been fully upgraded to LED. And then right behind it you got the John Hancock Tower. It's, it's called something else now, I forget, but nobody calls it that. You gotta call it the John Hancock Tower. So we are kind of off to a, a bad start, I apologize. Um, a lot of the meeting spaces they have there are being used or booked. So like I said, I'm not trying to intrude. Just kind of want to kind of go through, show you guys what it's like, provide some fun facts along the way, and uh, let you guys know of what they have offerings-wise, in case you're looking to stay here. Oh, one more thing. Uh, before I left, so I was the director of engineering at this hotel, at the Drake, and before I left, I went on top of the roof, and you get amazing views of Lake Michigan which you can't see from the ground here, but when you're high up, great views. And the other fun fact for you guys is Princess Diana herself has stayed here. There used to be, there, there used to be some artwork somewhere in the hotel on like the lower lobby. So I will try to find that for you guys, but she has her own suite here and it's on the fifth floor of the hotel. Right when you walk in, here is some of that artwork I was telling you about. There's definitely more. But yeah, the Drake Hotel, high society, and uh, Hilton bought it in the 1980s and kind of renovated it to keep it up to that grand scale, um, which I think they're doing a really good job with. Now we are gonna go head down, back down Michigan Avenue and go to our next spot, the Palmer House Hilton which was the hotel that I worked at the most when I was there. And along the way, I'll tell you some brief history of it, and then uh, we'll go inside. Okay, so stay with me here because the next hotel that we are going to is the Palmer House Hilton. This has been here since pretty much the Great Chicago Fire and there's a little bit of history to that and I'll get into that right now. So the Great Chicago Fire happened in 1871. A few names you need to know here, Potter Palmer and Bertha Honoré Palmer. Potter Palmer had built a hotel, the Palmer House, as a gift to his wife Bertha. But uh, shortly after, I'm talking like a matter of like within 30 days, Palmer House burned down due to the Great Chicago Fire. On November 8th, 1873, the new Palmer House welcomed its first guest, making it the opening of what would become the nation's longest continually operating hotel. One of the world's most beloved treats, the brownie, was invented at the Palmer House. Yes, the brownie. Bertha wanted something different for the uh, Chicago World's Fair in 1890s and hence the brownie was invented inside the Palmer House's kitchen. We are just steps away from the Palmer House here on State Street, but what kind of a Chicagoan would I be if I did not showcase the famous Marshall Fields clock? Now for, not Macy's, but formerly Marshall Fields. Here at the intersection of State Street and Monroe, I have the Palmer House right behind me in all of her glory, 25 stories tall, 1,641 guest rooms, five main ballrooms at this hotel, tons of history, tons and tons of history, the oldest operating hotel in North America, a lot to cover, and hopefully I can be able to show you guys everything that I want to here. So right behind me there are peacock doors, some more history on that, there's three in total, two here and one inside that's much in much better shape. This used to be a K Jewelers when I was here, now it sits vacant. But back in its heyday, it used to be CD Peacock. 
It was a jewelry store here that was famous on State Street in Chicago. You will notice there's subtle hints of peacocks throughout the Palmer House, and it's owed to one of the original jewelers here in Chicago, C.D. Peacock. But kind of sad that the uh, K Jewelers closed here. That was a tenant. This is pretty cool. So right outside their front entrance here, they have the man himself, Potter Palmer, with some backstory. But this is what the hotel used to look like. So this was version two. And then in 1920s, they tore half the building down, built it up to what you see today during construction in the 20s, they kept it operating. So that's why it has been coined the longest operating hotel, but that's what it used to look like. And then this is one of my favorite ballrooms, the Empire Room. I hope to be able to get in there and show that to you guys. A lot more history in that room. Hopefully I'll share that when I am there. All right, heading inside. Here is that other peacock door in the vestibule here. And yes, that is real gold. I, I know that from working here. So the sign behind me here, the peacock door, it says that um, Louis Tiffany from Tiffany & Co, the, the, the jewelers, designed these. And I do know there are light fixtures and chandeliers inside the lobby that he also designed as well, and I'll show those to you. But look at the peacock door. This is not the lobby area. This is just like a little foyer. Very nice though. Heading up to the lobby. I'll tell you what, it is, it's so good to be back here. This is one of my favorite hotels ever. And hopefully I'll be able to showcase you why. But look. I miss this. I saw some old uh, co-workers here. I'm gonna stop by and see them real quick and then I'll continue the tour. All right, let's get back to business here. Sorry for the weird transition. I'm taking the escalator from the street level up to the lobby and this view never gets old. It really doesn't. I'm gonna go up to the mezzanine level, but these were the Tiffany designed and everything on the, on the sconces here. And we're going to one of my favorite ballrooms in a little bit, the Empire Room. So they used to have the seats. I'm up on the mezzanine level here. They used to have seats up here that you can overlook of the lobby level. However, it does not look like they have those anymore because they used to be kind of in these little alcoves here. So inside the room right behind me here, the Empire Room. In 1930s, the dining room of the Empire Room, the ballroom here right behind me on these stairs, was transitioned into an entertainment and supper club. And it housed huge celebrities like Frank Sinatra, Judy Garland, Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, and so many more. So let's head back downstairs and we'll take you right into the Empire Room. It looks to be open right now. It's set up for something, but it looks to be open. Look, here's some more uh, historical photos of Chicago, the Palmer House in particular. This is the Wabash side. And here's another one of what the Palmer House used to look like, version two. We are in version three at the moment. All right, let's head back down. I do see some people inside there, so I'll try to pop my head, and if not, I'll show you some pictures. We're doing some setups, and I asked for permission, so they did say yes, but here's a quick look at the Empire Room in all of its glory. One of my favorite ballrooms here at the Palmer House. It is set up. They used to have a stage over there is where all the performers used to play, and then supposedly back here there's a little hallway. And the story for that is all the uh, entertainers that came here in the 30s, Ella Fitzgerald, Louis Armstrong, they signed their names and during a renovation somebody painted over all of it. Unfortunate because that would be cool to see today. Heading through the lobby you have the main registration over here. And I want to show you to one of the other ballrooms, the Honoré Ballroom. And while I'm here, Potter's. All right, I'm getting sidetracked here. So going back to CD Peacocks, um, the jewelry store that was out front, there was an elevator that took you to a vault. I have been inside the vault. I haven't. I don't have permission to share that with you guys here, but I do know it has been on news stations, local news stations here in Chicago, and I do have a video of it. But again, I don't want to put that out there if the hotel doesn't want me to have it out there. So, but they do have behind me here, China, 
So I'll show this to you real quick. It's essentially the same stuff inside the vault, but seeing the vault is pretty cool. So I got sidetracked, but there's Ronald Reagan at the Palmer House, and then here's the china that I was talking about. So these are gold plated. There are actual gold on all of the china that is there. And then I have some more stuff. They have the Palmer House logo on some of them. And then there it is, the greatest banquet in American history. So these were all uh, Bertha Honoré Palmer's china. Yep, there it is. I just saw it on the thing. 24 karat gold. And then here you have Prince Charles of the United Kingdom in 1977 here at the Palmer House. So they are currently, I don't know if you can hear, there's something going on in the honorary ballroom, so I'll try to find a picture for you guys. All right, time to go up to the fourth floor. Three other ballrooms on the fourth floor, the grand ballroom, the state ballroom, and my favorite, the red lacquer ballroom. Where are we at? Here we are. And here you go, fourth floor, grand state, red lacquer. A lot of meeting spaces here. With 1.6 million square feet, you can, hold, you can host a lot of people. Currently, the red lacquer room is empty at the moment. I know where the light switch is at. I'll turn it on real quick. Huh? This is one of my absolute favorite ballrooms here at the Palmer House. However, the ballroom was dark, so let's turn that back off. And we'll go to the next one. Bye-bye. It does look like there's some kind of convention or event going on over here, so I'm gonna see if I can show you guys the Grand State. Let's see if I'm able to. I'm gonna try to keep quiet. Here's a quick look at the Grand Ballroom. Very nice, I'm not gonna spend too much time in here. And then behind this wall here is the State Ballroom, but it opens up to expand pretty much. But there's people going on in the State Ballroom, so I will elect to not do that one. So at this point, showing you guys all five ball ballrooms. I'm gonna try to go to a guest floor real quick and show you guys what a traditional guest floor looks like. And they have pictures of all the performers that performed here back in the day, which is a pretty cool touch. All right, so let's go to 18. <laughs> Hi everybody. All right, so this is a traditional guest room floor. Many of the guest rooms here have 100 rooms on each floor or more. The only one that doesn't is like eight and nine, because those are the original floors back when um, the hotel was being converted or being re re renovated in the 1920s. So they have a lot larger rooms on the eighth and, eighth and ninth floor because they're original. Here's what I'm talking about. Sonny and Cher play the Empire Room in 1970. Oh, you got Louis Armstrong playing the Empire Room in 1959. You got Frankie Avalon, 1970. I want to try and find one of Frank Sinatra. I know it's around here somewhere. It's an old building. You don't have the bump outs like you do in, in newer hotels so you enter your room. Everything is right off of the main hallway here. And then you get the peacock kind of design and the carpet. So it kind of goes back to like what I said before, that CD Peacock and how it was such a staple in Chicago when it opened up. Not the one I was looking for, but here's Frank Sinatra and Joey Bishop playing The Empire Room in uh, 1961 and 1970. Yeah, so 8 through uh, 21 look like this. 22 and 23 are the executive floors and that concept of executive floors or club level started here. This is the first hotel to do it. All right, why don't I say we take the elevator back down? I'll show you some more public space of that. I'm not able to get in any guest rooms, unfortunately, today. One of the coworkers I was talking to was saying that they're getting the rooms ready because they're expected to sell out here for a conference coming in. And by the look of it, for all the meeting room spaces and not being able to get in, I believe it. So I 
there's no really sight rooms or anything like that that I can kind of show you guys on because I'm not staying here at the moment. All right, so what are some of your thoughts of this hotel and the Drake? Comment down below, let us know. Have you stayed here before? Have you thought about staying here before? Are you going to stay here now after I showed you some of what the public space looks like and the ballroom spaces? They truly do not make hotels like this anymore. And when you've been in business for over 150 years, you're doing something right. And just the, the, the grandeur of, of these hotels is truly, truly phenomenal. Truly phenomenal. I was never involved with it, but I heard stories of when they repaint the ceilings up here, they make it an event. Um, I believe, if I remember correctly, it used to take about maybe two weeks can I go through and paint everything? Because somebody special has to come through and paint all this. But they really make it an, an event where you can like drink wine and watch the artist paint the ceiling. They have scaffolding up here and whatnot. So it's something that you really don't want to see, but because of the way that they twist it and make an event out of it, it's something that you'll probably will never see maybe once in your lifetime. And I'm honored that I was able to work at both of them. Both of these, the Drake and the Palmer House, I have worked at. I spent more time here at the Palmer House though than I was at the Drake. I spent I think a total of three to four years here at the Palmer House and just under a year at the Drake before we relocated down to Florida. Um, I wasn't anticipating there being a lot of business in Chicago at the moment and so a lot of spaces are currently being used or being set up that I can't access really well. So I apologize I had to use a lot of photos for this but I hope you guys do understand. So real quick, I didn't really mention it at all, but they really have two main restaurants here. Potter Chicago, which is a burger bar. That's like evening only type reception. And then they have Lockwood Restaurant where you can get breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And then of course they, ha they have a Starbucks coffee that you can get your, any of your breakfast items or coffee. So I'm not gonna lie, some parts under the L, which is what you see here, the elevated train, can sometimes get a little sketchy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna head straight over to Michigan Avenue back to a more touristy area and I'm right in front of the uh, the Art Institute of Chicago and head on over to Hilton Chicago hotel number three and I do apologize this is a hotel that I have never worked at I know the least about but I still want to try to be able to showcase the public space for you but I do know out of all the three Hiltons here this was the one that has been inside of the most movies it hosts a lot of big names and it used to be called the Stevens Hotel but a lot of the rooms overlook Grant Park, and so you get incredible views of Lake Michigan. Incredible. So May 1927, Hilton Chicago, originally the Stevens Hotel, opened its doors at the largest hotel in the world with 3,000 guest rooms. Fast forward to today, there are 1,544 guest rooms and over 235,000 square feet of meeting room and event space. And it is also the historic hotels of America Best Historic Hotel, over 400 guest rooms, winner in 2023, which is a crowning and a huge achievement. We have made it. We are here. Let's go check out Hill in Chicago. Oh, very nice. It really has been some time since I've been here to Hill in Chicago. So let's go get lost together. Come on. And there is the founder of Hilton, Conrad Hilton. know if you can hear it is crowded really really crowded and noisy if there's some kind of event up there in the grand ballroom which is blocked off for me so I'm not gonna be able to go up there again I'll, I'll throw in a picture and then all the way on this side you have the boulevard room which again Special event, can't get in there. All right, let's see, registration. Let's try to go to the International Ballroom. Maybe we might have some luck there. This has been renovated and renovated nicely, might I add. All right, to make my point, all the different floors and meeting room spaces, but look at all the events that they have going on here today. Quite a bit. Okay, so this is cool. Like I mentioned before, most movies have been filmed here. 
movies and TV shows. So I'll just do a quick scan for you guys. Yeah, it looks like Home Alone 2 was not all filmed in New York after all, huh? It was filmed here. Part of it at least was filmed here. Here's another one full of uh, celebrities or government officials that have stayed here or been here. Starting with Queen Elizabeth in the 50s, Lyndon B. Johnson, the 36th president. You had John F. Kennedy was here in the 80s. And, and then, uh, of course, President Barack Obama, who is from Chicago, has been here. Speaking of Obama, in 2008 when he won election night, the um, Grant Park, which is right across the street from, from Hilton, Chicago, that's where, where, where the event was at. Lollapalooza is also held at Grand Park too. So it's right across the street from a lot of the big important stuff here in Chicago. So usually I'm not one to kind of throw in the towel here, but that was the case here at Hilton Chicago. Absolutely packed. The taxi lineup and cars being dropped off. Like, this is nuts. That's insane. And everybody is going to Hilton, Chicago. I couldn't get in anywhere. I had uh, security officers come up to me, ask me what I was doing, because I obviously have a camera that I'm, I'm filming and vlogging. Um, so I kind of got the hint. So I apologize, but I'm just going to showcase a couple of pictures and I'll put what the location is. But everything here is from Hilton, Chicago. That will pretty much do it here today in Chicago. Looked at three different hotels, and it's probably a good thing that I wasn't able to fully vlog uh, Hilton Chicago because my second battery is almost dead, so it was kind of meant to be for today, honestly. I could use my, my cell phone, but nonetheless, I truly got to see old co-workers, people that I haven't seen in a couple of years. So it was, it was nice to be able to kind of catch up a little bit, see everybody, and hopefully I was able to showcase how much these hotels and how amazing these hotels are to me. You know, I kind of, I got my start here after college, working at the Palmer House, and then went to California, and then back to the Palmer House, and then to the Drake, so a lot of moving around, but everything kind of happens for a reason, you know? And I, I, I truly believe that. This video was not sponsored in any way. This was just a former Hilton employee who loves Chicago, who loves two of the hotels that, that I worked at before. And I just really wanted to showcase it for you guys, for you at home or on the go or wherever you're watching this from. Truly appreciate you guys if you made it this far. Thank you for watching. I really hope you enjoyed a glimpse of all three Hiltons of Chicago. The Drake, the Palmer House, Hilton Chicago, three historic hotels, three iconic hotels here in Chicago. And I thoroughly hope you enjoyed and you learned something, you learned a thing or two. If you're on the fence about staying here or you're thinking about staying here, go ahead and book it. And I hope I convinced you otherwise. Thank you guys again for watching. Click this playlist right here if you are interested at all on any of our other hotel tours and resorts. And if you are a Disney fan, there's gonna be something in there for you, I promise, I promise. Thank you guys again for watching, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye.